Prior to insertion of the transvenous pacemaker, a central venous sheath introducer must be established, preferably in the right internal jugular or left subclavian vein. Ideally, the pacemaker will be inserted while the sterile field from the line insertion is still intact. If not, the catheter hub and surrounding skin must be prepared with antiseptic. Place sterile drapes broadly around the central venous access site. Begin the procedure by attaching the sterile sleeve to the hub of the sheath introducer. Specific devices and connections will vary by manufacturer, so you should be familiar with the equipment available at your institution. Bring the pacing catheter to the sterile field. Test the balloon on the catheter by inflating it with the recommended amount of air, which is usually 1.3 to 1.5 milliliters. Note that the inflation port has a sliding gate valve that is used to keep the balloon inflated. Make sure that the balloon is fully deflated before proceeding. If your sterile sleeve is equipped with an end valve, open it by turning it counterclockwise. Next, gently insert the catheter through the valve and into the sterile sleeve. Note that many sheath introducers have a closable valve, which must also be opened before advancing the catheter through the introducer and into the central circulation. Continue to advance the catheter until the tip of the catheter nears the right atrium. For the internal jugular approach, this distance is approximately 15 to 20 centimeters. For the subclavian, 10 to 15 centimeters. Pacing catheters have lines inscribed on them that can be used to estimate depth of insertion. The two lines depicted here represent a distance of 20 centimeters to the tip of the catheter. At this step of the procedure, the 20 centimeter mark should be positioned close to the region where the sheath introducer enters the skin. Next, extend the sterile sleeve over the catheter. The sleeve maintains a sterile environment around the catheter, allowing it to be repositioned without the risk of contamination. If your sleeve has a closable valve, securely tighten it around the catheter by twisting clockwise. Enlist the help of an assistant to prepare the pacemaker generator. Depending on the equipment used, adapter pins may be required to attach the terminals of the pacing catheter to the pacemaker. It is essential for you to be familiar with the specific devices used at your institution. Review all equipment and their proper use before proceeding. First, Connect the catheter terminals to the ports on the pacemaker generator. The proximal terminal should be attached to the positive port and the negative terminal to the distal. Tighten the screw clamps on the hub to secure the terminals to the ports. If your equipment utilizes an intermediate cable, attach it to the pacemaker generator. Next, dial in the appropriate settings on the generator. On the device depicted here, the dials adjust the pacing rate, the energy output, and the sensitivity, which is used for demand mode pacing. For most applications, the rate should be set 10 to 20 beats above the patient's heart rate, or 70 in the case of asystole. The output should be set to the maximum, which is usually 10 milliamps. The sensitivity should be adjusted to the halfway point, which is usually about 3 millivolts. Once the pacemaker settings have been dialed in, turn the pacemaker on. If your sheath introducer has a closable valve, make sure it is open by turning it counterclockwise. Inflate the balloon with air and close the gate valve. The balloon is designed to float the catheter along with the venous blood flow into the right ventricle. Advance the catheter through the introducer quickly and smoothly. Watch the EKG monitor during the advancement of the wire. At this point, you will see pacemaker spikes overlying the patient's native rhythm, but there will not be signs of capture. Continue to advance the catheter. 
your goal is to bring the tip of the pacing wire into direct contact with the trabeculae of the right ventricular endocardium. Once this occurs, you will see electrical capture on the EKG tracing. Capture is signified by a wide QRS complex occurring after every pacing spike. Once capture has been achieved, advance the catheter another 1 to 2 centimeters to firmly seat it against the right ventricular wall. Finally, deflate the balloon. If your sheath introducer has a closable valve, it should be tightened by turning it clockwise to secure the pacing wire in place. If capture is not obtained after advancing the catheter a total of 40 or 50 centimeters, deflate the balloon by opening the gate valve and withdraw the catheter to the original position. Reinflate the balloon and make another attempt at advancing the wire. Failure to capture may be caused by coiling of the catheter in the right atrium or by advancement into the inferior vena cava or pulmonary outflow tract. If the wire is advanced too far, diminishing amplitude of the pacing spikes may be seen. A variety of other conditions may lead to failure to pace or failure to capture, and these are discussed in the written portion of this chapter. Use the rate control dial to adjust the number of pacing impulses delivered per minute. This setting will vary with the clinical condition, but in general will be 10 to 20 beats above the patient's intrinsic rhythm or will be at a rate of 70 in the case of asystole. Next, determine the stimulation threshold by gradually decreasing the energy output until capture is lost. Ideally, this will occur at 1 milliamp or less. Then, slowly increase the output until capture is regained. The value that capture occurs at is the stimulation threshold. Adjust the output dial to a value 2 to 3 times the threshold in order to maintain a margin of safety. Now, adjust the sensitivity. Begin in full demand mode with the dial turned completely clockwise. Reduce the pacing rate to a level 10 beats per minute less than the intrinsic rhythm. With these initial settings, you should not see pacer spikes. Slowly decrease the sensitivity until pacer activity is seen. This is the sensitivity threshold. Set the sensitivity dial to a point halfway between the threshold and the maximum value. 